So what Tectonic is, is our enterprise distribution of Kubernetes. So it's open source, upstream Kubernetes at the core. Um, but what Tectonic does is it makes it uh, Kubernetes current and uh, secure, and it also makes it extremely simple to use. So what you're looking at here is a pre-installed Tectonic console. A couple call-outs first. Uh, of course, all the primitives that you would expect from native Kubernetes is all here, namespaces. Uh, that encompass uh, all the services and routing, uh, nodes, uh, different cluster settings. So Tectonic provides an easy operational console to, to manage your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, a couple highlights that I'd like to dig into here. Uh, first off, uh, the way Tectonic installs is actually very important. So I like to call this a highly opinionated way of installing. So the way we install, again, makes Kubernetes easy to use and makes it current and secure. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you dig into administration a bit here, the first thing I'd like to show you are roles and role bindings. So DEX is a project that we started and we're spearheading in the community. And DEX is really about RBAC and LDAP integration. So if you look at these roles and role bindings, imagine having to set this stuff up yourself and then have to manage it through a command line. Well, Tectonic makes it really easy. It comes pre-configured with a user interface to be able to mess around with these settings. So if I were to go into, let's say, a, a role, deployment controller, you can see that we've got a user interface that makes it easy to see uh, what are the things that this particular role can do, who's bound to the role here. If I were to edit into this, we have, again, a nice user interface to uh, manage all of this. So that's our back. Um, actually, uh, one point also, this is all hooked up to LDAP as well. So Tectonic makes it easy to hook up to your existing LDAP or Active Directory uh, servers and uh, make sure that works. So that's RBAC and uh, LDAP. Um, next thing I'd like to highlight is monitoring. So if I were to go into some of these nodes here, um, I'm going to find a service in a kube system. Uh, dig into one of these here. You can see that it's very easy to see, hey, what's going on on this particular service with these particular pods? If I click through here, you'll see that Prometheus is pre-configured and installed um, to have all of the capabilities to watch, hey, what is CPU shares and file system? What's going on with RAM on this particular uh, pod on this particular service? So uh, monitoring is also something that Tectonic uh, brings to the table. A couple cool things I also like to pull up uh, pull up here is if you go into uh, the deployments here. Uh, so this is really cool. Uh, last year we introduced a concept called Boot Kube or self-hosted. So if you've ever run any distributed systems, you know that the master services are extremely important. I mean, if those master services go, um, you're dead in the water here. So what we thought is. Well, if we got this Kubernetes system and it's self-healing and things on top of it automatically have HA, why not run our master services on Kubernetes itself? Um, so what you're looking at here, I'm looking at the kube system namespace, is I'm going to click into the kube controller manager. So again, this is part of the highly opinionated way that Tectonic installs, but we take the master services of Kubernetes itself and we run it on Kubernetes. So the kube controller manager is actually the master service that's make sure it's, it's got the feedback loop where it makes sure that all the state is correct in the system. So let's say that you've got an application that you want three or four replicas on. Um, the kube controller manager is actually what keep those replicas running. You can see here that the kube controller manager itself is running uh, with two different replicas. So if I were to go in here and delete this particular pod, no, it would actually self-heal itself. So you can see that we get a lot of the capabilities of Kubernetes uh, all built in um, just by running the master services on Kubernetes itself. So this is, a, this is pretty cool from an operational point of view. Another thing I like to call out um, from an operational point of view is the concept of operators. So I talked about running master services of Kubernetes itself on Kubernetes, um, but we uh, coined a term and uh, an entire uh, concept and all the code and everything in community called operators. So operators in essentially encompasses everything you would have to do as an operator of a system. So if you are operating a distributed system, we've codified all of everything that it takes. So um, for instance, if you take a look at the operators we have here, we have an etcd operator. So what we've done is we've written an operator for etcd that codifies everything you need to do to operate an etcd cluster 
And since Kubernetes needs an etcd cluster, we've decided to run this operator again on Kubernetes itself. So if you look at here, you've got uh, three different pods that are running etcd. And uh, the, again, the idea is you're hands off. So let's say that uh, etcd, you know that you've got three of these things. You know they all need to be on a certain version. Um, if one goes down, what are the things you need to do from an operational perspective? Operators take care of all of that and codify it for you. Um, so if you combine operators and you combine the concept of self-hosted that I showed you where we're running the masters on Kubernetes itself, it really leads up to what we're trying to do from an operational point of view where we want to make all of this automatically updating. So if you know a bit about the history of the company, CoreOS was founded on the premise of running and securing the internet. So we birthed an operating system uh, now rebranded as Container Linux that was automatically updating to make sure you were always secure and up-to-date and all had all the recent patches, most recent patches. What we've done is we've extended that concept to Kubernetes as well. So Tectonic brings to the table, um, if you can, again, if you combine operators and self-hosted all those concepts, um, together you get the ability to automatically update your cluster and make sure this thing is up and running. So we've extended the concept of automatically updating operating systems to Kubernetes itself in Tectonic. Again, Tectonic enables all of this. So this administrative console I'm showing you right here shows you that you've got Tectonic and Container Linux. It shows you what versions you're on right now. Um, you can pick, hey, for these uh, upgrades, automatic upgrades, one-click upgrades on Tectonic, do I want to make it such that admins have to approve this or do I want it to automatically happen? But again, this, this lays down all of the capabilities and the framework you need to make this thing completely uh, self-driving and, and everything just goes on its own. You don't have to worry about it. You just have a platform that runs your applications and operationally that just really cuts down on costs and efforts. Um, so that is Tectonic and some of the feature highlights. What I'd like to do now is really run you folks through a flow where we take an application that's running in Tectonic make a change to it so you can see how it can fit in and flow through the entire uh, life cycle of an application change.